Hi, my name is Raniel Hernandez, and the evidence-based intervention that I chose from Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration is the treatment considerations for youth and young adults with serious emotional disturbances and serious mental illnesses and co-occurring substance use. The framework that they use for this is the precede proceed model, which is consists of different phases and steps where they determine the, the issues and barriers that will help the intervention to be successful. The process is the part where the intervention is being implemented and evaluated throughout the process. The social epi epidemiological assessment is where the target population is identified, which are the youth and young adults that are suffering with serious emotional disturbances, serious mental illnesses, and who are at risk for co-occurring substance misuse or substance use disorder. It shows evidence that more than 66% of youth in the United States experience a traumatic event or circumstances by 16 years of age, and many children experience chronic trauma. Behavioral and environmental assessment showed that different factors and barriers that influences the youth and young adults behavior, which are the peer behavior, parental behavior, and societal characteristics, which could be poverty, love, and policy-driven factors, systemic racism, and discrimination. And some of the personal factors may be coming from personal experience of the individual come from trauma, abusive parents, neglect, community violence, death of a loved one. The intervention they would be using is a treatment practice. One of them is a cognitive behavioral therapy, which identifies maladaptive patterns of thinking, emotional response, or behavior, and substituting them with effective approaches, such as teaching them skills related to managing emotions, challenging negative thoughts, and problem solving. The treatment range from 3 to 12 months of weekly and twice monthly sessions in both group and individual formats. The ad adaptation of this intervention was widely used across genders, ages 11 to 20, different races, and demographic diverse ethnicities. Studies were conducted in the outpatient settings, which is community mental health centers, school-based health centers. Some of the concerns and struggle of the intervention may run through is that the youth and young adults with recurring disorders may find it difficult to engage and retain in treatment due to the factors like peer pressure, shifts in autonomy, and decision-making in young adulthood. The CBT provides tools that will help these individuals to understand the triggers or substance use and identify healthy ways of coping. These skills will assist the youth beyond the length of the treatment and prevent relapse. Some aftercare program also provides youths and young adults some additional support services that may be at risk for relapse. The implementation of this intervention is used through Motivational techniques, which was adaptable from multiple cultures, which was shown effective as the process of a change and motivational enhancement can be tailored to, to values, beliefs, and experiences of individuals from different ethnic, cultural, and racial backgrounds. The staffs were also trained to screen for identified areas of needs on youth and young adults by using prepared toolkits from the National Association of Community Health Centers. Staffs are also need to be trauma-informed and include the knowledge of SED, SMI, and USUD. They must also evaluate a youth and young adult's emotional and social development stages to provide developmentally appropriate interventions. They also must fully understand the guidelines, methods, and structure for utilizing a given treatment practice with clients. Some of the outcomes associated with the CBT is that studies have demonstrated that the use of CBT with youth and young adults with co-occurring mental disorders and SUD was associated with significant reduction of follow-up in frequency of marijuana use, frequency in general substance use, severity of PTSD symptoms, severity of depressive symptoms, frequency of trauma-associated cognitions.
and the evaluation of effectiveness of intervention showed that it was helpful in engaging youth and young adults in treatment, providing them with the need of self-efficacy and helping them assess their own readiness and motivation to change. The use of the screenings and assessments that help detect the symptoms among young adults allowed them to be able to receive the early treatment they need and preventing the serious risk of mental health problem and preventing it to worsen the condition. Thank you.